Well, good morning. Welcome to another day in the life of advisory. So today, I'm Mr. Pruitt, and I'm going to be talking about statistics and probability. Things you've heard about, things you know, but we'll work and see how far we can get there. So let's start with statistics, okay? Uh, understanding what numbers are telling us. We're going to start with measures of central tendency, means how are our numbers grouped together towards the middle? What's their middle kind of look like? So we've got mean, median, and mode. We know that mean means the average of a set of numbers. We know that, which means you add them all together and divide by how many there are. We know that uh, median is the middle. We know that mode is the number that occurs most often. So mean is the average. Add them together, divide by how many numbers we have. Median means the middle of our data set. <clears throat> Excuse me. And mode is the number that occurs most often. So I've got seven numbers here. These seven numbers are the days of the month that me, my wife, and uh, my kids were born on. So I have a son born on the 8th. My wife and I were both born on the 12th. Son born on the 13th. A daughter born on the 23rd of a month. Uh, another son born on the 24th, and then my youngest daughter, our youngest daughter, was born on the 26th of last month. She's a sophomore also. No, she doesn't go to school here, but that's no problem. Okay, so we're going to find the average, find the mean. So I've added them together, and I get 118. Okay, so to find the mean, then, we take 118 divided by 7, which is about, that means about, or approximately, or equals if you want to write it, it's about 16.9, okay? So the average of this data set, the mean of this data set is 16.9. So 16.9. Okay, the middle number. Well, a lot of you have been taught to take the list. We've got them in order from least to greatest, which was kind of a good thing, I guess. And so what is the middle of our list? Well, some of you were taught back in the day, okay, this and this go together, and this and this go together, and this and this go together, and whatever's left is the middle. Well, there's our middle. It's 13. So the middle of this data set is 13. Okay? Simple enough. All right, I'm not going to listen to Miss Tucker while she's ignoring me there. Okay, so the mode is the number that occurs most often. Which number shows the most? It's 12. It's 12. So our mode is 12. Okay? Mean, median, and mode. Again, you've probably heard since fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Hopefully you heard it a lot in eighth and ninth grade. It's on the Aspire. It's something that's tested. It's on the ACT. We've got to know how to manipulate it. So there that is. Okay. So from statistics, we're going to go into probability. And this is a basic, simple concept as well. So we're looking at probability. Probability is defined as the probability of an event. E stands for simply event. The number of outcomes we want to occur, W-A-N-T. The number of outcomes we want to occur, that's not hashtag, that's pound, meaning number. Number of outcomes we want divided by the number of outcomes possible, okay? The no number of outcomes possible. So we've got a die, okay? We're going to roll a die. We're not shooting craps. That's illegal at school. But we're rolling a die, and there's six numbers here, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six possible outcomes. Each of them are independent and means each of them will occur equally likely amount of times. So we're looking at first, I've erased this, but we'll throw this back up here. What's the probability of rolling a four? The probability of rolling a four. Well, looking at our data set, how many of them are fours? Well, there's one four. So the number of outcomes we want, there's one four. We don't want to write four here. There is one four. So we're writing a one right there. And how many possible outcomes are there? There are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So, there we are. One out of six. Now, we can change that to a decimal, which is 0.18, something, 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 something. something. Okay, I, I don't necessarily want to do that. So, we'll just leave this as one sixth. So, now let's look at this one underneath. What's the probability that we get an odd, an odd number? Well, one, three, and five are odd numbers, yes? Out of, so three again. 3 out of, again, there's still 6 numbers in our list. So that's 3 sixths. But 
most of you recognize, hey, that will simplify. We can reduce that fraction. So we divide both of them by three, their greatest common factor. Standardized tests will almost always, always, always simplify them. So this will be one half. We can write it as one half, but this is a nice decimal here. We know that one half as a decimal is, thank you, 0.5, also known as 50%. Okay, so, so far so good. All right, so now let's look at our data set again. We want the probability of not getting a three. Not getting a three. Not. Don't want a three. Well, there's one three. So how many numbers are not three? Five, right? So there's five. Five numbers are not three out of, thank you, six. Five six. That's 0.8333. Let's don't write that either. Let's leave it as a fraction. Fractions are good for us. Okay? I know you hate fractions. Fractions are good. It's an exact answer. Okay, so we've talked about statistics, measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. We've talked about probability, simple probability of numbers occurring, what we want to occur over how many possible outcomes. So now let's extend it a little bit more. So I woke up this morning. Most of you woke up this morning. I had to wear to school today four shirts because it was a college day or a school color day. So I had a choice of a Razorback football shirt, which I have on, or three Sil different Sylvan Hill shirts. I chose the, this one just for today. I also had five pair of jeans that I own, period. Some of you have a lot more than that, that's okay. I have five pair of jeans. I have two different pair of tennis shoes that I wear. So how many different outfits could I come up with? Well, to answer this, it's called the fundamental counting principle. To use the fundamental counting pr principle, you multiply. So we're going to multiply these numbers. I have four shirts to pick from, five pair of jeans. I have this event, this event, and this event. We have three different events occurring, so I like to make a picture of them. Four here, five here, three here. Oops, sorry, that's not a three, Put that's a two. And two there. So fundamental counting principle. We have separate events occurring. How many different total outcomes can we have? Four times five is 20. 20 times two is, thank you. Some of you answered that without using the calculator. So there's 40 different outfits I could have worn today, okay? Shirt, pants, shoes, four, five, and two make 40. Okay, so far so good, I'm hoping. So now let's look at this. Let's say that my four shirts, okay? We're, I've got, I had four shirts to choose from. Let's say that how many different ways during for the next week, okay, for the four consecutive school days, if I wore, if I have four shirts to choose from, I have four different days, how many different permutations, some of you were thinking combinations, how many different outcomes can I have with all those shirts together? Okay, so what we do with this is I take first the permutations, okay? We take, this is where order matters, because once I choose the Razorback shirt of my four shirts, how many shirts do I have left to choose from? Okay, I have four shirts to choose from. I wear this shirt. How many shirts do I have left to choose? You're right, three. Okay, this is a form of the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so the next day I pick one of my Sylvan Hill shirts. How many shirts do I have left to choose from? I have two. And then obviously one shirt at the very end. So how many different ways how many different arrangements can I have there with picking from four shirts? Well, to do that, I multiply. It's a type of fundamental counting principle. So we're going to multiply. Four times three times two times one means there's 24 different outcomes. A permutation is where order matters. If I wear the shirt, I'm not going to pick it again. Yeah, I may wash it, but no, I'm not going to wear it time after time. People begin to talk about you after a while. They talk about me enough as it is. So we have those 24 different outcomes. So now let's look at what is called a combination, not like a combination law. Combination laws are really permutations because it matters what order you write them in, but a combination. Let's say we have five people running in a race. We have five different people running in a race. And let's say we award prizes for first, second, and third. Okay, we award prizes for first, second, and third. They all get the same prize. They all win $100 for running this race. So some of you say you want to run that race. Run against me, you win one of the prizes. So five different races, racers. Order does not matter how they finish. 
the first three people all get the same prize. So that's five people, but we're only giving three prizes. Okay, so how many can win first place? How many can go finish first? There's five people. Okay, all right. Now, how many people then can finish in the next place? That's four people. And then how many people can finish in the next place? That's three people. So using combinations, order doesn't matter what order they finish in, how many different people could fit in that place? That's 12, or 20 again times three, there's 60. So there's 60 possible outcomes on combinations, okay? Combinations, order does not matter. Permutations, order does matter, okay? I hope that helped, I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, ask your teacher. Hopefully he or she can help you. If not, I'm sorry about that. Have a great day.